what's up everyone um this is another pick your card um it is satanic and angelic um tarot and oracle card reading what you would need to do is pick one of um the sets of cards that um has a specific object on it uh to begin um this is the first one is the leaf, the second one is the candle, the third one is the stone, the fourth one are the fortune coins, and the fifth one is prayer beads. So go ahead and pick the one that you're most drawn to instinctively and then go to the timestamp at the bottom. This reading is for the people that chose the leaf as um, their instinctive object and for their ter and satanic and angelic um, tarot card reading. Let's look. First card is the Empress in reverse. The second card is the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. And the last card is the Queen of Cups upright. <clears throat> to start, um, I'd like to look at the Empress upwards, um, or reverse. When the Empress is reversed, she tends to be someone that is secretive but gentle in her ways and um she she keeps things to herself but she's she's diplomatic and um fair um to the people around her so but in the reverse it, it constitutes something that is more suspicious more that is um someone that is more closed off uh almost like a spin spinstress um one that is um, overcome by her status um, aside from the position that she holds to do good for the community. Um, that's what I'm picking up for the Empress in reverse. Now with the Nine of Pentacles in reverse, we see someone who has a great deal of possibly wealth or anything to do with affluence or um, material gain. And this person who has um, a lot of these um, assets at her disposal um, has squandered them um, frivolously, has not utilized them to their best potential in order to um, kind of achieve what she is looking for. Now, when I look at this into conjunction, you go on to the Queen of Cups. Now, the Empress is a is the um, major arcana, so she's going to hold more dominance in the reading. So this is the present status of the person, someone that could be an upright Empress, but chooses not to. <clears throat> now. If this is constituting life lessons that could um, culminate over a period of time, then the reading goes into the Queen of Cups, who is more of a, she is an affluent um, but well-respected queen. So um, she has a, a lot of um, capital and resources at her disposal but this time she is using them more wisely because it's in the upright she doesn't squander them away but she she continues to utilize them to her best advantage so 
if, like I said, I was reading this as like a past, present, and future card reading, that I would think this is that the current, whether it be male or female, um, would be in a upside down empress position of suspicion and you know uh, backhandedness not stuff that are negative to the upright empress who is a gentle and compassionate ruler but with also the the nine of pentacles in reverse you see a squandering away of resources of frivolity um, whereas enjoying it would be reversed and utilizing it for a better cause would be um, in that situation. But yet, in the future, there's this possibility that um, she could, the quarant, he or she could turn into the Queen of Cups of someone who, who developed into quite a respected person. Now, when we look at... <clears throat> the demonic elements and the satanic elements of this reading we get number 15 the lamb so let me see what that looks like all right um, when you see that that's this um, sigil at the very top for um, this particular reading um, but it's uh, Hannah number 15, Balaam, what, what is the reading on that? Okay, Arcana number 15, Balaam, the 15th Lord of Darkness, Balaam, commander of 72 legions of hell spirits, bears the title of king. When being summoned, he takes the form of an enormous man with three heads, a man's a calf's, and a buffalo's. He is also characterized by his scaly viper-like tail and webbed toes. The lamb's eyes carry fire and destruction. The buffalo aims at the body, the calf targets the soul, and the man attacks the spirit. As the Lord of Darkness, the lamb teaches invisibility and astral flight. He is uncannily versed in philosophy calms down negative emotions and endows his followers with wisdom and good mood. He is also a clairvoyant, revealing secrets of the past, present, and future. So, astrology is number 11 through 15 degrees of Gemini, parentheses 31.05-04.06. Time of day, 4.40 to 5 a.m. Keyword, intimacy. Place of manifestation, meadows. Words of power, Caricia, Edofio, Tephipicus. Magical characteristics. Mental progress, prediction, invisibility. Predictive properties, the Corinth's life is currently characterized by intimate affairs. So, once again, the predictive properties, the Corinth's life is char currently characterized by intimate affairs. So there are intimate affairs that are, are being um, adjusted um, in, in the way that you're trying to achieve your goals, but it says, you know, he reveals the secrets of the past, present, and the future. Now, we'll look at the angel Lyrium um, and see what that um, has to say. It's chest head, um, left hand, empathy. So, chest head, left hand, empathy. Right hand, I'm sorry, chest head, right hand, empathy is the word. Chest head, right hand, empathy. The fourth emanation, the hand that embraces the healing tears brought on by the forgiveness of sins, each kindness repaid in kind. 
Chess Head's force pulls humanity together, allowing peace to exist between us. This is the power to look inside the hearts of those around us and see that we are truly alike. Our need for love and kindness is a central part of our existence and transcends all other differences we might have. The blue orb's embrace extends across all existence. Chess head is at the very center of the peel, pillar of mercy, defining its core characteristic and forming an extreme opposite to its female counterpart, Gavera. The two arms of the tree extend in opposite directions. Chess head pulls tight so that Gavera cannot push away. This wrestling match cannot be won by either side, yet the struggling itself is meaningful because it is the struggle that defines our mor morality. Uh, Chess head is found in kindness, charity, and love. Once again, Chess head is found in kindness, charity, and love. So, in essence, you know, he, he is the right hand, someone of empathy, someone that, you know, embraces and heals with forgiveness of sins and, and such. So, he is, he, he empathizes and understands your emotions and feelings and, and how there is possibly some deviant, you know, intimate activities that are that are diverting you from your original destiny. So that is the reading for people who chose the leaf. This is for the people that had picked the candle, um, the, the fortune for that and the tarot card reading for your angelic and satanic um, tarot and oracle cards. So let's begin with the tarot card reading. Eight of Pentacles in reverse, the devil in reverse, and we got the two of pentacles upright <clears throat> to begin the eight or the eight of pentacles in reverse is signifying that there is um a uh laziness um an apathy a refusal to grow up to actually uh achieve anything purposeful um, to squander and waste away your life um, by not actually putting forth some effort into doing work that is necessary to to achieve your goal or expectations in life. So if it was in the upright, it would be about hard work, but this is the opposite of that, which is laziness, slothness, not doing what you really need to do to achieve um, any particular goal set in mind. Now we get the devil in reverse. And the devil in reverse constitutes that when you're not looking at things in a logical perspective. You're not really um, taking into consideration what really needs to be achieved at this point. You're just kind of going about la-di-da without any um, specific goal or purpose in mind. So, um, but you're being held down and, and um, uh, imprisoned by such things as possible juvenile behavior, delinquent behavior, things that are just not very good for you, you know, so 
you're not l thinking clearly, you're not analyzing using ro logic and reasoning. Instead, you're just being this trapped person to the devil and all the temptations and debauchery and, and, and possible violence, I don't know, just bad behavior that, that is really um, um, holding you back and taking control of your life. So, you know, what needs to happen is, so far from what I can see, is that there needs to be some hard work invested and a, a release of, of bad things that are holding you down, take, you know, taking, taking important parts of your way. But then it seems like in the Two of Pentacles upright, there's like this challenge for you. And it's really challenging because it's, it's imbalanced. Um, it comes with a price possibly, something that you're not willing to give up, but at the same time you would like to give up because, you know, there's possibly something better or, so you're, you're in limbo with this situation, you know. You're not actually doing any particular work that is, that is gainful. You're being locked down by temptations or other seductions and bad behavior that, that, is, that is clouding your um, judgment, your logic and reasoning. But then it seems to come like an, an ill balance for you. Like you're gonna have to make a vital decision at one point. You're really gonna have to put the money where your mouth is, I guess, in a way, or money where, where you feel the investment is going to be more gainful. So um, there are two issues at play here, you know, like do you go on to something better or do you continue with your bad behavior? But that seems like the kind of overall um, atmosphere I'm getting or the reading from I'm getting from these cards. But let's go on into your uh, satanic, demonic element of your card. And you have number 96, M Molo. And that is um, the cycle at the very top. So number 96, Molo. And I will read that to you here in a second. Okay. Oh, that's Moloch. Okay, I didn't see that. Number 96, right? Yeah, Moloch. Oh my goodness. Okay, Moloch. He only kind of, he's one of the more bigger temptations, the, the, the God that eats babies and gets sacrificed babies. But um, anyways, the Arcana number 96 is Moloch. It only comes with predictive properties. So your predictive properties, Arcana 96, acknowledge the need for an offering. So you're going to have to um, give up something at this point and um, that is what th that Arcana is saying. Once again the predictive properties for Moloch are Arcana 96 acknowledge the need for an offering so you're gonna have to offer something at this point. It seems like you're, you're, you're not gonna be able to juggle these two things anymore. You're gonna have to Put something in action. So your card, um, your angelic card for this reading is Ramil and he is the angel of vision. So uh, let me read that for you. Okay, Ramil, the angel of visions. 
The shepherd of good graces, a shining light in the distance, beckoning us forward into the future. The green pastures beyond the next hill are hard to see. Ramil assures us that things will get better. It whispers, something is coming and it is beautiful. Keep pushing towards the horizon, towards the setting sun. As the light fades, you feel as if someone is watching you. Far in the distance, you see a lone figure walking a dove on its shoulder. You stop for a moment to marvel at this vision. When you move again, it is gone. You hear a flutter of feathers as the dove lands gracefully on your shoulder. A sign of Ramil, a cane, the rising sun, a white dove. Once again, the signs for Ramil are a cane, the rising sun, a white dove. So it's time to make a decision. Basically what this reading says is that you need to hop on it. So, um, and get up on it and do what your visions are telling you to do. Then you're gonna have to make a decision about ending, ending something in order to begin something new. So this is for anyone that had chose the reading for the object of the candle. This is the Satanic and Angelic Tarot card and Oracle card reading for people that chose a stone. Your first card is Page of Cups in the Reversal. Your second card is the Chariot Upright. And your third is the Nine of Swords in the reverse. With the Page of Cups in reverse, you are getting some bad advice or some ill advice to corrupt you or to deceive you or there is deception that is taking place. Um, Whereas if it was in the upright, it would be good news, but this is like bad news to um, divert your attention to what is really important and trying to create problems with that. The chariot upright means that you will be successful in doing this, that you will not... Um, have any problems with the bad advice that you're getting in the reversal of the Page of Cups, but in the Chariot upright, you're, you'll see through this like, and somehow you'll be triumphant and succeed at what you're uh, attempting to do. But unfortunately, there's gonna be a cost to this. And this cost is going to be um, a lot of regret, um, a lot of uh, bad judgment, a lot of um, uh, mental illness, depression, worry. Um, and these things will be exacerbated because um, what's going on is that <clears throat> the corn is going through something that is even more traumatic in terms of reaching his or her own goal. And the chariot states that, you know, you're trying to achieve something that is, that is really important to you, but it's gonna cost you in the end, um, and a lot of problems, and a lot of worry, and a lot of upset. Um, which will be um, tremendous um, as a result of that. Now, when we <clears throat> consult the Oracle card for the Satanic part of the reading, your card is number 68, Vap 
Nebula. So when we look at that, we're looking at um, what demonic elements or satanic elements are guiding um, you at this point. And it's numbers, what was it, 68? So, so number 68, Vapula. Arcana number 68, the 68th Lord of Darkness. Vapula, the ruler of 16 legions of demons, is a duke of Emperor Adramela. Six Palace. Vapula is to be summoned on a Wednesday during the new moon with the sorcerer facing towards the east. His seal makes a first-rate talisman when one has to pass exams. This demon helps the sorcerer to overcome the trials of life when being manifested within the summons of summoning triangle. Vapula takes the shape of a lion with the wings of a griffin. Astrology 6 through 10 degree of Pisces parentheses 20 24 dot 02 parentheses time of day 2240 to 2300 o'clock keyword sorcerer of Lucifer place of manifestation near ringing bells the word of power tenmi oak reki olor magical characteristics helping with examinations predictive properties the corn should beware of a friend who is double-faced and envious so once again i'm going to reiterate this predictive properties the corn should be aware of a friend who is double-faced and envious so that means that there is someone that is giving you bad advice to achieve something you think that could be an important goal, but in the end, it's actually just a foolish decision and someone is, is bad and this guy can handle that, but he's of the demonic element <clears throat> in the reading. Now on to the angelic reading. You have Keter, who is um, the crown of spirituality. So Keter is like the all-knowing. And I'll read you what Keter is. Keter, the crown spirituality, the first emanation, the first utterance, the font of energy through which Ein Sof emanates into the universe. The crown sits above the head and embodies that which is beyond our comprehension. One must envision Keter not as an object that can be perceived, but as a light that casts upon it. Keter's light is beyond no ability, a timeless expanse of pure consciousness. Only through respect for your own limitations do we begin to see the shadow of its nature. It is the dark orb beyond which lies the infinite. As the highest point on the tree, all continuums cascade downward from it. Keter stands in contrast to Malku, who rests at the very bottom of the tree. The span that lies between them measures the complete distance from most spiritual to the most physical aspects of our existence. Journeying downward from this point, all other emanations become increasingly close to our present experience. Keter is found in spiritual epiphany, faith, humility. So we'll, once again, Keter is found in spiritual epiphany, faith, and humility. So to take that into context, when we look at this, um, bad advice, achieving goals, but it was not the goal. The problem was a deceitful person, and in the end, um, you will come to a possibly a spiritual epiphany or some type of humility or faith that you can be invested in more fully. So. 
This is the reading for people who chose the stone. So if you chose the stone. This is the angelic and satanic um, or tarot and oracle card reading for people that chose the, the fortune coins. So if you chose the fortune coins, this is your reading. first card is the Ten of Swords in reverse. Second card is Two of Wands in reverse. The third card is the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. <clears throat> or upright, I'm sorry. Uh, the Ten of Swords in reverse as you can see, this man has swords sticking into his back, so he's defeated. He has he is at the point of being completely defeated, hit rock bottom. Um, nothing is going uh, well, so he's he's gone. You know, he's just that's the end at the very bottom of life, the worst of the worst that you could get, and he realizes this. He understands that this is quite problematic for him. Um, so, but there's just one broken vision that is left. And he feels that he can still take on the world. And, and um, but even that vision has come to a halt um, that he no longer has anything left. Um, in terms of uh, where he is uh, going or what he is doing because whereas this if it was in the upright you would know that he had the whole world in his hands now he no longer even has that so this is like pretty much the worst point that anyone could be at because it's almost derelict you know um, and homeless you know to that point so you know it's like the man has hit rock bottom completely but then at the very end we receive the will of fortune and oftentimes with the will of fortune those that have lived well will descend into not living well anymore and those that have not lived well will ascend to um, living well. So basically, you would be able to um, go back to where you originally wanted to be in a life, like there was a vision. So hopefully it's about luck shifting and changing and that there is this cycle of when, what goes up must come down and you know, this whole karmactic cycle that, that revolves in trying to, um, at this point from the reading, it looks like, you know, all the pains, all the worst things, hitting rock bottom to being, you know, not even having the world at your fingertips anymore, but, you know, just being destitute at some point and losing everything to, a change of fortune um, that is based around the karma or the seeds that you have sown to to give rebirth to what you have done in this life um, and how you've done it for others. So um, a repayment, possibly, um, if if everything is has not gone out the way it is. The only way it could go now is up. And that's what, you know, you're kind of shooting for. 
your satanic and demonic element that is controlling this is um, Stolas number 63. So um, Stolas is Arcana 63 and the reading for that is there okay so he's arcana number 63 stolas the 63rd lord of darkness stolas commander of 140 legions of demons bears the title of prince of the first and second kingdoms his summoning process is irrelevant to astrological considerations the prince endows the sorcerer with the knowledge of magical properties of plants and stones. He can also reveal to him everything about astrology. Stolas assumes the shape of a cra craven within the summoning uh, triangle. Astrology 11 through 15 degrees of Aquarius parentheses 26 30 dot 01 parentheses time of day 24 20 o'clock 20 o 40 o'clock to 21 o'clock keywords master of magic places of manifestation among red roses words of power agros healthy lee nymphico magical characteristics deep knowledge of astrology plants and stones predictive properties a business oriented person a sponsor or creditor has entered the quarant's life so there could be someone that's entering into your life that could give you an opportunity it's like making kind of like a deal with the devil at this point when it talks about you know um the demonic aspects that could facilitate in changing your fortune. But we can also look at the Angel Lyrium card and what you get from, from that and what are the divine and godly forces that have led you to this point. So, Leal, Angel of Night, a fleeting spirit who dances across the sky, beautiful but aloof, Stars fill the tresses of Leal's hair. The night passes whether we are lost to quiet murmurs of sleep or staring out at the darkened expanse of sky. For everything you see, there are a hundred things unseen. You witness the glimmer, the gleaming of what is truly there. Leo passes from star to star, filling the night with light. One would think the darkness. Leo's realm. However, it is starlight that heralds night's arrival. Star bright, starlight, dance on and on across this night. What lullabies awake us, what glimmering night's charms, with Leo hangs upon the sky for all to see, for all to dream. Signs, wind, sheer cloth, the moon. So, dream. So, dream. Once again, the signs are wind, sheer cloth, the moon. So, he is the angel of the night. So, dream. That's my advice. Dream about all this shit that happened. Dream the big dream at this point. Um, so that is the satanic and angelic reading for the people that chose the fortune coins. So if you chose the fortune coins, those, that's your reading.
This is the angelic and satanic reading tarot and oracle card um, reading for people that I chose the, the prayer beads. Your first card is the Knight of Cups in reverse. Your second card is the Nine of Wands in reverse. The third card is the World. So the Knight of Cups is demonstrating someone who thought they were riding into victory, but was sorely um, mistaken that they made, they may not have rode into victory like they had um, suspected, and they were probably really gung ho about going and achieving some great um, dream or aspiration and. This, um, this was not as, oh, successful, um, to their expectations. They had a, they had high expectations and they didn't meet them. And now there is some disappointment when it comes to the Knight of, uh, Wands in which you see this. This guy on here, he's he's been beat up pretty bad because there's a lot of um, people out there that have um, just as good um, a talent as may the corn that is getting this reading. So um, he he basically he or she basically fell short. Um, underestimated um, how tough the world can really be and how you are not always number one. Um, you might be on the bottom of the list when you're up against, um, you know, uh, a pack of lions, you know, or something like that. So um, you're not, you're not all that that was that you thought you were and and so with the nine of wands it seems like as though that is coming to a realization kind of knocked on the head of reality you know saying well you got knocked up pretty good so now you're learning um, what life is really about and what it what can happen and and what will affect you. <clears throat> and then you get into the third card, which is the world. And now the world is about, um, you basically got the world in your hands now. Um, for some reason or some unknown purpose, you had to go through this hard knocked life lesson in order for you to eventually achieve success in everything that you wanted uh, in the world. So um, this talks about, you know, great achievements and, and uh, respect. And so everything could, could be manifested by the world. It's like Jesus has a whole world in his hands. So the world is, is, is this idea of um, coming into a realization about the hardships of life and now you're, you're triumphant in understanding harder lessons that the world has offered you. And, and sometimes you just have to take those lemons and make lemonade, you know, kind of reading. Now, when we go into the satanic and demonic element of this reading, you get the first card, Agoras. And now Agoras um, is the first uh, arcana 
Um, and I'll read you what Agoras is all about and how he's influencing this whole reading that that is um, that I'm giving you right now and how how your situation is in relation to it. Arcana number one, Agoras, the first lord of darkness. Agoras is the duke of eastern territories of hell. He commands 30 legions of the Hissite demons with each legion consisting of 10,000 soldiers. These fearful warriors are extremely tall with big black heads, flaming red eyes, and wide muscular necks. Each normally carries a two-handed sword and a two meter long heavy spear, but this is not their only protection. Since their bodies and heads are covered with armor, Agoras leads his army riding an enormous green-gray crocodile with a hawk on his wrist. He seems like an old man, but his power suggests otherwise. When visiting the earth, he can bestow the summoning sorcerer with the knowledge of all the known languages. E earth rulers used to summon Agoras to locate fugitives and deliver them to the authorities. He even had the ability to command the power of nature. So uh, the astrology is um, one through five degrees of Aries, parentheses 22-26.03 parentheses, time of day, zero o'clock to 20 minutes, keyword soul, place of manifestation, cemetery, uh, words of power, Fellner, OS, Kabir, Mot, magical characteristics, necromancy, insanity, career breakdown, tracing fugitives, controlling the powers of nature, the predictive characteristics, the current is focusing on the material aspects of a relationship. So maybe it's about, you know, losing everything and and that's your your focus on this, like you know, hitting rock bottom, and you're only uh, focusing on the material aspects of what is going on in your life. Let's consult the angel card reading. Okay. Well, you have um, Hazmat, Angel of Annihilation. So. Let's see what that has to say. Um, okay. Hazmat, Angel of Annihilation, the Unmaker, a terrible sight to behold, the void eating itself and making itself anew. That which no longer exists is unmade by Hazmat's hand. hands. There is something that needs to be removed. Looked upon that which should not be and lose it from existence. Signs, a hood, an eclipse, an empty field. So the signs of Hazmat, the angel of annihilation is a hood, an eclipse an empty fill. So basically what is lost um, was lost for a good reason. And according to the angelic aspects of this reading, um, it was important that this loss take place so that you could have more success and, and uh, uh, in the future because when you hold on to the upright upright world card I mean you can't really get any better than that so in order to lose something um, like it says the signs are a hood an eclipse and an empty field so 
In order to go through the loss, you must gain the world in return. So I think that's what it's referring to. So that is the um, pick a card for the prayer beads um, for the angelic and the satanic uh, tarot and oracle card reading.